Welcome to the MD Edge Daily News for Friday, September 7th. I'm your host, Nick Andrews. And I'm MD Edge editor, Mary Ellen Schneider. Today, obstructive sleep apnea may promote gout. Also today, community-based therapy improved asthma outcomes in African-American teens. And later, hospital settings matter for pneumonia. But we begin today with a look at the efficacy of influenza antivirals. An investigational single-dose influenza antiviral drug appears significantly better than placebo at relieving the symptoms of infection and reduces viral load faster than oseltamivir. This is according to new Phase 2 and 3 trial results published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In the Phase 2 study, patients were treated with either 10, 20, or 40 milligrams of biloxivir. The researchers report that patients experienced a significantly shorter median time to symptom alleviation compared with placebo. Also, all three doses showed significantly greater reduction in influenza virus teeters on days 2 and 3 compared with placebo. In the Phase 3 capstone trial was a double-blind placebo oseltamivir controlled randomized trial. It included patients between 20 and 64 years old in Japan and the U.S., In the study, researchers report that the median time to alleviation of symptoms was similar in the two drugs. However, patients who took biloxivir had significantly faster declines in infectious viral load compared with those taking oseltamivir. In addition, patients who were treated with biloxivir within 24 hours of symptom onset showed significantly shorter time to alleviation of symptoms compared with placebo than did those who started treatment more than 24 hours after symptoms began. The researchers also report that adverse events related to the study drug were more common among patients taking oseltamivir compared with biloxivir or placebo. Adults with obstructive sleep apnea are about twice as likely to develop gout compared with people who don't have sleep apnea. This is according to new data with a median five-year follow-up, published in Arthritis and Rheumatology. In the study, researchers compared data from more than 15,000 patients with sleep apnea to data from more than 60,000 patients without the condition. They report that about 5% of patients with sleep apnea versus about 2.5% of control participants developed gout. The greatest risk for gout in the sleep apnea group occurred about one to two years after diagnosis. The researchers also report significant associations between body mass index and gout risk in sleep apnea across all BMI categories. However, the strongest association occurred in the group with a normal BMI at about two to five years after diagnosis. The researchers note that the novelty of this study lies in assessing both the short and long-term association of obstructive sleep apnea with incident gout in a large primary care-based population. A family and community-based treatment program significantly improved outcomes in African-American adolescents with moderate to severe persistent asthma. This is according to results published in Pediatrics. In the study of 167 African-American patients between 12 and 16 years old, researchers randomly assigned the adolescents to either multisystemic therapy health care or to family support therapy. Forced expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, was the primary endpoint, and secondary outcomes include medication adherence, symptom severity, and ED visits. The researchers report that the patients who received multisystemic therapy had a statistically significantly greater improvement of FEV1 compared with patients who received only family support. Patients in the family support control group received weekly home-based counseling for up to six months, and patients in the multisystemic group were first engaged in a motivational session with the therapist and evaluated for asthma management with interview and observations within the home and community. Sylvie Nair is a researcher at Florida State University. Dr. Nair says that data are especially noteworthy because African-American adolescents experience greater morbidity and mortality from asthma while adolescents, even when controlling for socioeconomic variables. And finally today, 
A little hospital service goes a long way. Inpatients with pneumonia are just slightly more likely to receive chest x-rays than those in the emergency department, but there are considerable discrepancies between the two settings for other services. This is according to a report from the National Center for Health Statistics that looks at pneumonia hospitalizations in 2014. The report comes from the National Hospital Care Survey Demonstration Project and includes patient claims data from about 100 hospitals and more than 30,000 total hospitalizations. Just over 65% of inpatients with a first listed diagnosis of pneumonia and 63% of those treated in the ED received a chest x-ray in 2014. The percentages were not as close for other diagnostic services. Inpatient stays were much more likely to involve bacteriology and microbiology testing, CT scans, and pulmonary function tests compared with ED encounters. The report also states that the age distribution of the two patient populations were also quite different. Indeed, those 65 and older made up the largest share of pneumonia inpatients, while those who were 15 or younger made up a similar percentage of visits to the ED. That concludes the MD Edge Daily News for the first week in September. If you like the Daily News, please give us a rating. Or if you have thoughts or suggestions, please comment below. You can read more about any of the stories you heard today by clicking the links in the description, as well as by heading over to mdedge.com. I'm MD Edge editor, Mary Ellen Schneider. And I'm Nick Andrews. Don't forget the MD Edge CardioCast is all new today. Last week, we heard from the MD Edge cardiology team on highlights of the 2018 Annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology in Munich. This week, Dr. Jim Dwyer returns to review some of the data presented at ESC 2018. You can listen to the CardioCast, as well as the MD Edge Sitecast and previous episodes of the MD Edge Daily News on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Alexa.